Hello, everybody, and welcome to this next release of Miracle version 0.8. Um, oh, they're digging quite a big hole outside, so I hope that doesn't... Oh, they're really slammed. Hopefully that doesn't come up on the mic too much. But anyway, I want to get this out today because I want to move on to more things. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So the biggest thing this release was in accessibility and input devices. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate all the accessibility features here, but at least I'm going to walk through them. Oh my gosh, that construction crazy. At least I'm going to walk through them and just show you what we've implemented. A lot of these were implemented upstream in Mir, and I'm just allowing them to be configured and turn audible, enableable. One of those is a word um, in Miracle. So let's start here with hover click. Hover click. So hover click is an accessibility feature that enables users to click by hovering. You can now configure this in Miracle. It looks something like this. And if this is something you rely on, it should be available to you now. So go right ahead and use it. The next thing up is simulated secondary click. So if you long click a left click with this enabled, it'll turn into a right click. Um, this is specifically useful if maybe you're lacking that button or maybe you have a little difficulty going back and forth there. So again, You'll see this in the accessibility session section in the Miracle Wim Wiki, and you can try that out today. Up next, we got slow keys. So slow keys is an accessibility feature which allows you to insert a delay between when a key is pressed and when it's actually inputted into the system. So you can set to this delay in milliseconds, and after that delay, let's say it's five seconds, it'll register the key. Um, this is useful if maybe you have shaky fingers or something, or you know you have trouble clicking one key precisely at once. They are they are just full on slamming the ground over there, but it's fine. We're gonna power through. Up next, we got sticky keys. So this makes it so that you can hold down, you can just click modifiers, and they will be registered as if they're held down. So for example, if you want to open your terminal in Miracle with uh, Super Enter. You could just, in that case, um, click super, and then later click enter, and it will trigger as if it's being held down. Um, this is useful if you have trouble holding down multiple modifier keys at once. So give this a try. And last, but certainly not least, and probably the easiest one to show you, is the magnifier accessibility feature. So if I do, I believe it's super shift plus, I can bring up the magnifying glass and I could look all around, and things are magnified. I could increase the magnification in hands and see all around, um, and also decrease it and decrease the area and stuff like that. Um, I'll turn this off for now. How do I do that? Oh, that is meta escape. Escape. Um, so yeah, this has a bunch of different things that you could uh, configure here, and it's super useful if you want to use, you know, a typical magnifying glass feature in Miracle. So those are all the accessibility features. Um, but the other big thing that we worked on <coughs> in this past uh, couple of days, or month, days, months, um, are input configurations. So specifically, I have touchpad, cursor, and keyboard configuration. We'll start with touchpad because it's right here, and I actually implemented this today. Um, but now you could implement or configure all types of things for your touchpad. For example, tap to click is a feature that's been requested. So you could, you know, set this to true and you don't actually have to click down. You can just tap on your touchpad. There's a whole bunch of options here that you could play around with. A lot of them are just directly tied into lib input, um, but they should give you overall a better experience here. The next one is the cursor configuration. So right now we only have like scale and focus mode on the cursor. So how to focus windows with the cursor, you know, whether you have to hover, you know, I have it as hover, so you'll see it changes when the cursor goes over it, but you can set that to click now and it'll only change when you click. Um, and the scale's a pretty cool one. So perhaps I could go over there and just set this to two and you'll see we have a bigger, what does that look like at eight? Ah, oh, that's scaled wrong. Let's set it to two for now. We have a slightly larger cursor here now. The next cool thing we implemented is an output filter on your entire screen. Oh my gosh, they're just smacking it now. It's an output filter on your entire screen. So what you can do is provide a shader path. And Miracle will ship with a number of shaders by default. 
and that shader will be applied to your entire output. So I'll switch over to my config here and you see I have this um, commented out, but we could do this and I call it warmth um, dot fragment shader. If I save that, you'll see the whole screen gets kind of this warmish orange tinge and I could go like this to do it. Um, and this is really cool because you can even use this to implement your own shader. So if I go to form.frag, all you have to do as someone who wants to implement their own shader is implement this function and return some color. Um, one of the floats that you get in here by default is the epoch time, but we'll add more as we see fit. Another cool thing that we added, and it's just a quality of life thing, is that everywhere in the configuration file, where you see a tilde, will now resolve to the user's home directory. Um, this is obviously really helpful when you want to distribute your dot files or whatever to other people. They can now just have tilde, and it'll resolve to theirs, their home directory on their end. So it's pretty cool. Um, the other thing that you might see that is right next to this is this new keyword called includes. And if I switch over here and go here, um, you will see that includes is a way to actually compose your configuration from up multiple YAML files. So the file that lives usually in MiracleWimps uh, config.yaml is your main file, but whatever is here, in the includes will be included afterwards, meaning that whatever is included afterwards will overwrite with or merge with um, what is in this config.yaml file, depending on the value. So you'll see here, for example, I am starting XCG desktop portal WLR in my startup apps from the user config. Um, and this is helpful because this might not be something in your config that you want to actually distribute to people. Let's say that you have your Miracle config and you want to show people it. Um, <clears throat> you might have some custom things for you in this file, or you might just want to build your config from a number of files. I don't know. You do you. But um, this makes that possible. It's really powerful. I find that I use this a lot. Like I'm on my desktop right now, so I'll have a certain mouse config here, um, a certain input config here, and then... On my um on my laptop I'll have a different config. So that's that. It's pretty cool and very useful. All right, next up, and what you've probably been seeing the whole time is that I got fade animations to work on workspaces and I've fixed up the animation system a lot. Um one of the cool things that you could do now is combine animations in sort of a list. So you could run multiple animations simultaneously. So if you want, for example, Let's see if we can make one really quick. So let's say we do something like that and we'll see if I have any problems now. Actually, let's make this a big duration. On window open, the window should both fade and grow simultaneously. And that didn't work because something... Oh, because I don't have valid YAML. Whoa, and see now we're, we're fading and growing. Gotta have, gotta have valid YAML. Um, but this is cool, so if I open another one, whoa, pretty cool. All right, um, so that all works. Let me comment this out because I don't want to deal with this. So let's copy the engine. And... Oh no, that's also not valid YAML. There we go. <laughs> um, oh, and that's even less valid YAML. All right, um, so that's pretty cool. You can now combine animations and the reason I started doing this is because I want people to be able to write their own animations eventually. So I'm going to build a plugin system around this where you could specify your own animation, um, probably in WebAssembly, but we're going to see what happens there. So that's really cool. Um, go out and combine animations. In the process, I also um, started combining a few animations. So there's no longer fade in and fade out. There's just fade, and we decide on what that means in the context. Um, so it's pretty cool. And yeah, a big part of this also was fixing the workspace animation. So if you've seen the workspace animations before, if you were on workspace zero and you went to workspace nine, it would actually animate over all 10 workspaces, which is really stupid. So instead now we just kind of animate logically. So there I went from like one to five, one to two, and it just animates over one. It's really simple. 
I was just doing it. The, I was just doing it the dumb way before, and now we're doing it the smart way, and it all looks good. Um, and I like this to be a fade though because I think it looks nice. On top of all this, there's just a bunch of quality of life improvements. For example, um, the C API that we expose to actually configure Miracle, you know, from third party tools like the Flutter tool I'm building. Um, that's now well documented using good doc strings and a little more consistent. Um, when you float a window, it always gets centered. This is like such a small thing, but it's like such a huge quality of life. Um, it doesn't just maintain its current size. You probably want it centered in the screen. We also have a Clang build and the Clang build actually works now. So we're running a Clang build in CI and that Clang build compiles and you, you got to compile the code for the code to work. So that's very good. So that pretty much does it. I'm going to release the build today. Um, both the snap and the Debian package. I'm so bad at doing the Debian package. I always ignore the Debian pack. I just have to do it. I just have, to, I hate packaging. I hate packaging. Um, I'm going to do that today. I'm going to get this all released. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Oh, and by the way, someone, Someone emailed me and was like, hey, your AI generated um, logo doesn't look really nice. And I 1000% agree on that. So if anyone feels so inclined to generate their, not generate, no, not generate, like actually write their own, that doesn't look terrible. Um, that'd be greatly appreciated, but you don't have to if you don't want to. But it would be pretty cool because an AI generated star holding a puzzle while cute is clearly AI generated. I think the, the term they use is it looks like a, uh, like a scammy phone game. And I couldn't agree more. So that's going to do it for this release. Install Miracle. Let me know how you think. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> There's one more thing. I have also recently just released my dot .files. Um, they're very opinionated. Like, maybe stupid opinionated. And um, you probably don't want to run the install script because it only runs on Ubuntu and it's whatever. But if you want an idea of how I personally use Miracle, that's the setup that I'm using here right now. It has a neat little config YAML. It's very simple and all this stuff works. If you want the desktop that you see here, that looks like this, looks real cool. You can go check that out there. Install at your own risk though. Uh, yeah, yeah, install at your own risk. All right. That is all for this release, and I will see you next time.